The EWA, the Arch User Repository, is no stranger to weird and random packages, whether it's a printer driver that maybe one other person needs, whether it's a random project on GitHub that has zero stars that you have no idea how anybody has ever heard of, and much, much more. Basically, if anybody has ever talked about a program, it's very likely going to be on the AUR. And recently, that was taken to a new extreme with this bot right here, the BioArch Linux bot, which within the span of roughly two days, posted 3,500 packages. This is about 70 pages with 50 things per page and about 4.14% of the entire AUR. But yesterday when I first heard about this and I first started planning out this video, it was only at about 2,000 or so packages, roughly, I think, 2.41% of the entire AUR, which was still a lot of packages, but I uploaded an extra 1,500 since then. Now, it's not like it's still uploading things. In the past eight or so hours, it seems like it has stabilized at 3,468 packages. There was a Reddit post made about this, and the few people that had commented about it rightly were kind of freaked out. Is this spam? Is this malware? Just what is going on on the AUR? And luckily doing a bit of surface level digging answers pretty much all of those questions. So as the names would suggest, things like r dash yarn r dash yes no r dash wpm and if you look through all of the packages in here every single one is r dash something and this naming convention is for a programming library so you'll see things like python dash something or perl dash something ruby dash something in this case it's r dash something this means they are r packages and checking out the package build for any of these, that is corroborated as well. For example, let's go with our yarn, go into the package build here, and we can see the URL being downloaded from is bioconductor.org. Looking at the rest of the package build, nothing in here is that crazy. It's going to do the R command to build stuff, it's going to install this library, it's going to copy a file, and that's pretty much it. Like, this is a pretty standard package build. So Bioconductor is this site right here. It contains a collection of basically open source packages for bioinformatics. And if you don't know, bioinformatics is basically the study of biological data through the use of computers. You're doing like statistical modeling and things of that nature. And because that is what you're doing, it makes a lot of sense why you would have a bunch of R packages. So R alongside Python are incredibly popular languages for doing statistical analysis. They're basically the de facto standards. And I know some uni students going to tell me, what about this language? What about that language? I'm fully aware that other languages are used in this space. It's just that R and Python are definitely major players. Anyway, like most of these AUR packaging attempts, the creator of the original program, in this case Bioconductor, generally isn't affiliated with getting things actually packaged. The AUR, for the most part, there are some exceptions, but for the most part are things being packaged by users of that software who just like the software and feel like more people should have an easy way to access it. What got some people really confused, though, is BioArch Linux isn't just this bot. Going to their maintainer page, they actually have a website. Their website is another repo. So BioArch Linux right now already has a repo available. You can literally add it into Pac-Man and install all of the same packages. So they're available in a third-party repo and also the AUR. So effectively, the AUR is being used as like a dumping ground or a backup or a mirror of all the packages in this repo. But that doesn't mean it's inherently a bad thing. Just because something is available in a third-party repo doesn't mean you can't also have it on the AUR. The AUR does have plenty of rules of how things should be packaged and what can be packaged, but it does have one very basic one. If it's not useful to other people, then it probably shouldn't be on the AUR. And while the pool of people who would care about an R package is very, 
very small. Especially when there are packages centered around doing bioinformatics. I can't imagine how many people really care about that. But is that pool really any smaller than a printer driver for some random archaic printer? I would argue probably not. And that's totally fair. But there's a much more important question. Should packages like this even exist on the AUR? Should you just be adding libraries for the sake of adding libraries? Now you might be saying, but what about all the Python libraries, Ruby libraries, Perl libraries, and all of the other libraries, not just in the AUR, but also in the standard repos as well? So the reason why those libraries are available is for one very clear reason. They are dependencies for a user-facing application. So let's say you want to install a terminal, for example, and it requires some Python library. Now, one thing the package manager could make you do is install the Python library through pip and then install the package through pacman. But that makes it really difficult to manage because now you effectively have two package managers managing the same program, but not managing the entire program and not communicating with each other. So I could do something like uninstall the library in pip, the main package manager thinks the library is still installed, thinks the program should work perfectly fine, but it's not there, and the program breaks. I could update the library, then the version number is mismatched with the main package manager, the program may not work with the newer version, and it breaks again. And while you can certainly use those libraries you install from the AUR and Pac-Man for development, if development is what you are trying to do, it should be installed either through your language's package manager or by managing the packages directly. And much like how Python has pip, R also has cran. And all of these libraries that have been added are not dependencies for any user-facing applications. Some of them are dependencies for other packages. It's just other R packages also uploaded by this bot. So effectively, all of these things are here solely for development. And at least from my perspective, I don't really think they should be on the AUR. Plus the fact they have their own repo for this anyway. So if they want to have this really weird workflow that you probably shouldn't do, their own repo is already there to do it. The other question is whether an AUR package can really just be maintained by a bot. Now, for some languages... I do think that would be basically a waste of time. Like if you're compiling code and you have to worry about different dependencies that might be changing in different repos and things like that, or things that just may not even be in the same repo, that would basically be completely out of the question. But in this case, pretty much all that needs to be done is making sure the package isn't out of date. And that just involves changing the tag to pull from. And then that's pretty much it. Now, there may be cases where things do go wrong, where things may not work in certain environments and things like that, and maintainer intervention is going to be required. But considering what these are, I think that should go over pretty fine. The only concern is if the bot breaks at some point and then everything just falls out of date. Then it is left to be dealt with by the AUR maintainers who now have an extra 3,500 packages that basically no one is ever going to use. However, with all that being said, while I personally don't think these should be on the AUR, it does seem like this is being done in good faith, and they are just trying to get the packages out there. At least from my understanding of the rules, it doesn't seem like they are breaking any of them, but maybe someone has a different opinion. And this whole topic gives us a good way to talk about where to go if you need to report any problems on the AUR. So if the maintainer of a package is still active, so they're still updating stuff, it seems like they are still involved in making sure it works, and let's say the program stops building or a dependency is missing and things like that, the best place to go is the comment section of that individual package. That's where the maintainer is going to see it and everything can be dealt with. But there's a lot of cases where a maintainer will have disappeared and a package may be abandoned. Maybe there's lots of spam and things like that. What you should do then is go to the AUR mailing list. So there are three AUR mailing lists. There's AUR dev, AUR general, and AUR requests. So AUR dev is for development 
of the AUR. Generally, that's not one that you're usually going to need to use. There's AUR general. This is for general discussion about the AUR, but commonly is used for things like reporting abusive users, reporting malware, reporting spam, and things like that. Then there is AUR requests specifically for requesting an action to occur. So a package may be abandoned, for example, or you may be the developer of a package, and for whatever reason, you just don't want it on the AUR. So here you can go to request a deletion of a package. Maybe there are like multiple packages doing the exact same thing. Maybe those packages should be merged together, and sometimes a package needs to be marked as an orphan, in which case you'd go here as well. So while I don't think this is a good use of the AUR, especially when they already have their own repo, it's probably still a valid use of the AUR, but maybe you disagree, and I would love to know your thoughts. And if any of the BioArch Linux guys happen to see this, let me know in the comment section down below why you put everything on the AUR, just so it sort of clears up what's going on. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. If you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Sonic Bear, pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.